Joyce Kilmer and the Seed of a Holy Vocation by Julia Lennon and her collaborators. Alfred Joyce Kilmer is mostly famous for being the author of inspiring World War I poems, such as Prayer of a Soldier in France, and especially for his children's poem, Trees. Can you complete the next line? I think that I shall never see... Write a poem lovely as a tree. Perhaps many of our listeners memorized this poem in their school days. In fact, the late Mr. Walter Piverunis, our bishop's dad, was heard in his 80s to fondly recite this poem, which he still remembered from second grade. Perhaps less known about Joyce Kilmer are some of the details of his conversion to Catholicism and his spiritual life, as well as the fact that he and his poet wife also had a daughter who was a poet and who became a nun in Minnesota. Later, we'll share some interesting details about his little-known daughter, as well as some of her poetry. Her father, though, who chose to go by Joyce and not Alfred Kilmer, um, no to bene, a good call that, was born in New Jersey on December 6, 1886, and raised in the Episcopalian Church. Though they were not Catholic, his parents were very careful about the religious training of their son. He was a sweet and curious child, always asking questions, wanting to know if it was perfume that made the roses smell, or what was a sister-in-law. At three years old, when asked how much he loved his mother, he told her that he loved her ten dollars, which was a great amount at the end of the 19th century. Joyce was a lively child, but he still had a good conscience that kept him in line. He would immediately regret it when he did something wrong, thinking to himself, I'm afraid God won't love me. So you can see, he started life with a tender conscience and a mind for spiritual matters. Joyce was not an enthusiastic student, though, in primary grades, finding it difficult to fit in with any of the groups of boys that congregated on the playground during recess. He could stand his ground, though, and got into a few fights, a result of his quick temper and his sense of justice. He also found, throughout his school years, that he had equally as difficult a time getting along with arithmetic. Nota bene, some of us can associate with this feeling. But where he failed to prosper in math, he made up for it in language arts. He learned early to love literature and honed a masterly use of words throughout his academic career. If asked to write a poem to a tune, he easily succeeded, and by secondary grades he was writing for the school paper. He was equally accomplished in public speaking, learning not to fear criticism for his thoughts, whether they were written or spoken. And as he grew older, this courage and confidence grew with him. Once in college, life for him changed in an important way. It was then that he met a beautiful young girl named Aileen Murray, whom he would marry in 1908, after they both graduated. They were a happy couple, and there was an excellent teamwork between them. Among other things, while Joyce composed articles, it was his wife who typed them, since he was not much of a typist. Straight out of college, Joyce found work as a Latin teacher, but even as he devoted himself to his responsibilities as a teacher, he continued the habit of writing that he developed, constantly improving his craft. It was during his first year teaching that Joyce Kilmer's poems began to be published, over time circulating in five different magazines. His literary expertise becoming known, he was also employed by popular periodicals to review books. His honest and helpful critiques gained enough popularity that he became a regular contributor to these magazines. This addition to the family income was especially welcome when the Kilmers were blessed with their first child, their son Kenton, in 1909. It wasn't long before Kilmer realized that he never really was cut out to be a teacher, and he resigned his job teaching Latin when the school year ended, convinced he could support his wife and child with literary work, editing, writing, and speaking, all the things for which he felt he had more talent. As is true for most writers, he didn't make much money at first, but he loved the work and felt he had a future in the literary world. Between the year 1909 and 1918, he and his wife Aileen became the parents of five children, so this was no small hope, and his efforts did begin to pay off, literally, in income, 
as well as in his growing immersion in literary circles, which had both good and bad effects. During this second decade of the 20th century, caught up in worldly pursuits, Kilmer drifted away from any belief in God. His faith only rekindled when his little daughter Rose was struck with polio. Having drifted away from the religion of his youth, but overwhelmed with burden and sorrow, he stopped daily at a nearby Catholic church to pray for faith. He later wrote to a priest friend, quote, When faith did come, it came, I think, by way of my little paralyzed daughter. Her lifeless hands led me. I think her tiny still feet knew beautiful paths. End quote. After Joyce and his wife were conditionally baptized into the Catholic Church in 1913, he especially loved receiving Holy Communion daily. One day he was hit by a train while going to work, but he was thrown to the side and uninjured. He attributed his safety to the fact that he had just received Holy Communion. Kilmer began to publish books of his poems shortly after 1910. Because his writing style was fresh and his subject matter suitable to the spirit of the day, his work was greatly admired by the reading public. To expand his horizons, he traveled to Europe in this decade and visited the Catholic writers G. K. Chesterton and Hilaire Belloc, and was able during this time to arrange to write articles for British newspapers. Also, at about this time, 1914 to be exact, World War I erupted in Europe, and Kilmer was not sorry to return to the safety of America, which at this time was determined to stay out of the conflict. This determination was short-lived, however. The Kilmer family had only a few short years before their peace was interrupted, but these were eventful years. After Joyce's return to the States, the Kilmers were delighted to welcome another child into their growing family, Deborah, who was destined to become a Benedictine nun. Soon after Deborah entered the scene, two more boys were born, Michael and Christopher. As a father, Joyce was firm and loving, always looking out for the spiritual good of his children, and his brilliant mind was able to keep up with his writing, no matter how distracting his surroundings. If necessary, a determined writer can dictate what he wants to write while walking back and forth trying to calm a crying baby. In 1917, after the sinking of several U.S. merchant vessels in the British Isles, the U.S. was finally compelled to enter the war, and Joyce Kilmer didn't wait to be called up, but immediately volunteered for the Army, starting out as a private, but eventually rising to the rank of sergeant. Ironically, considering his disdain for mathematics, he was originally named the Regimental Statistician. Considering that Kilmer was really just beginning to find literary success, and was indeed becoming known as a rising star on the Catholic intellectual scene, one wonders what could compel him to leave it all, his career and most of all his beloved wife and family, to engage in this kind of endeavor, war, a pursuit that seems the least possible thing suited to his temperament. What made him do it? He tells us. In his poem, The Peacemaker, which we will read in a minute here, he wrote that he believed that as a man, a husband, and a father, as a duty of manhood, quote, to banish war, he must a warrior be. He believed that preserving the civilized world for the sake of his family and for the sake of the world itself was just cause. Those who fought in World War I didn't know it was a vain pursuit at the time. We now know, of course, that this tragic war was not the war to end all wars, but Kilmer's personal motives were noble and self-sacrificing. Sadly, before he went away to war, the Kilmer's little daughter Rose died. The loss was heartbreaking, but they knew they had a little saint in heaven. Writing to a priest after her death, Joyce said, quote, her death was a piercing blow, but beautiful. While Rose died, the voices of the sisters singing O Salutaris Hostia could be heard in the room. Certainly, Rose makes heaven dearer to us. Once he was sent overseas, Joyce went cheerfully and dutifully into the world of cold, hunger, and constant danger of death. He served in the famous Fighting 69th with the Irish chaplain Father Duffy. Ultimately assigned to intelligence work, he performed his duty with brave and enthusiastic devotion. 
It was on July 30th, 1918, that he was sent on a reconnaissance mission and was killed by a sniper's gunshot to the head. He was 31 years old. Shortly before his death, he had written in a letter to a nun named Sister Emerentia, quote, Pray that I may love God more. Except while we are in the trenches, I receive Holy Communion every morning, so it ought to be all the easier for me to gain the object of my prayers. I got faith, you know, by praying for it. I hope to get love the same way. End quote. Although his life was short, Joyce Kilmer's name lives on through his work, through his stories and poems, but especially by being an exemplary Catholic. There are many inspirations that we can take away from his short but fulfilling life. One of these things, which is an epilogue to Joyce Kilmer's life, greater even than the composite of his work, is the greatest epitaph any parent could pray for, that his love, and especially his faith, lives on in his children. As mentioned earlier, the Kilmer's daughter Deborah grew up to be a Benedictine nun. Taking the name Sister Michael, she completed her life in a convent of the order in St. Joseph, Minnesota, passing into eternity 24 years ago in 1999. Judging by how difficult it is to find any information about her online, one can say that though she was the child of a major literary figure, she led a life of holy obscurity in her calling. However, some insight into her spiritual and, no surprise, her literary life can be discovered. The Benedictines at the monastery where she is buried in St. Joseph graciously allowed some of our CMD sisters recently to look through St. Michael's personal belongings in their archives. Among her writings, they found many lovely poems in which one can recognize the influence of her father's poetry and the sweetness of her own spiritual life. They also discovered in the handwritten copy of her total consecration according to St. Louis de Montfort that her full name in religion was Sister Mary Ann Michael of the Holy Child Jesus. In her retreat notes, she seems to focus on some of the same themes that we find in her father's poems and personal writings, meditations on the love of God, gratitude for crosses, drawing souls to God, the offering of oneself as a victim, and earning heaven through crosses. On January 1, 1950, she wrote out an offering of herself as a victim to suffer for the Pope and for priests and religious. We also find in her spiritual notes quotes from her father's letters written shortly before his death. Quote, Pray for me, he wrote, that I may love God more, and that I may be more unceasingly conscious of him. That is the greatest desire I have. It seems to me that if I can learn to love God more passionately, more constantly, without distractions, that absolutely nothing else can matter. Sister Michael Kilmer's work is mostly unpublished, so we have chosen to share four poems which were written in the 1940s in the early years of her religious life. This first short one is untitled. What matter if crosses are heavy? What matter if long the road? There's a prize that's worth the journey, and a lover worth more than the load. The second is called Prayer for a Priest. Mother of the Christ, I come to thee. Here, kneeling at thy feet, I make my plea. This priest was meant by God thy son to be, even as Christ thy Lord was son to thee. And then this poem is entitled Thanksgiving. If I were a farmer, I'd thank God for snow, for crops and for raindrops and how the winds blow. And if I had children, I'd thank him for those, and praise his great power in how each one grows. If I were a child, I should thank him for fun, for parents and home and the power to run. Today I will thank him again and again for friends who have gone and for those who remain, for all sorrow and pain and a cross bright with tears. I'll thank him and praise him through nights dark with fears. As I learn and I buy with the coin of my pain, for himself and his gifts, I shall thank him again. And the last one of hers is called Desire. If only I could speak the flame within my soul, 
O God, whose love pervades as fire the glowing coal, grant that this flame of love to others I may give. Its burning is my death each hour, and yet I live. May others also live, a fire with love divine. May many hearts love fire be kindled here at mine. It's easy to find the poetry of Joyce Kilmer in books and online, but we'll end here by giving you a taste of two of his poems. The first one, which we briefly quoted earlier, shows his attitude toward being a soldier. It's called The Peacemaker. Upon his will he binds a radiant chain. For freedom's sake he is no longer free. It is his task, the slave of liberty, with his own blood to wipe away a stain. That pain may cease, he yields his flesh to pain. To banish war, he must a warrior be. He dwells in night, eternal dawn to see, and gladly dies, abundant life to gain. What matters death, if freedom be not dead? No flags are fair, if freedom's flag be furled. Who fights for freedom goes with joyful tread to meet the fires of hell against him hurled and has for captain him whose thorn-wreathed head smiles from the cross upon a conquered world. And the last one is The Singing Girl. There was a little maiden in blue and silver dressed. She sang to God in heaven and God within her breast. It flooded me with pleasure. It pierced me like a sword. When this young maiden sang, My soul doth magnify the Lord. The stars sing all together and hear the angels sing, but they said they had never heard so beautiful a thing. St. Mary and St. Joseph and St. Elizabeth, pray for us poets now and at the hour of death. Amen. Our thanks to Julia Lanin, the chief authoress of this post. Also, our gratitude to our co-editor and the sisters who took the initiative to find out more about Joyce Kilmer's daughter, Sister Michael. What a treat to learn this story and to read Sister Michael's poetry. And a quick addendum. The staff, if you can call us staff, at Catholic Family Podcast always welcome essays, videos, and recordings that might be shared for the edification of the faithful. You can send queries to Kevin, if you like, at kevin89davis at gmail.com.